Hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. I'm Mike Beecher, AKA Main Cub. We're going to be welding a two inch scale of 40 pipe thin wall, open root, 6010 the root, and 7018 fill and cap. All right, let's go prep this pipe. I'll show you how it's done. Before we chuck this pipe up in here, I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm doing. So we already cut this bevel on the plasma, the Quickie Shot Pro. This is a 37 half degree bevel. Uh, you gotta have a total included angle of 70 degrees. First, we're gonna clean this oxidation up here from the plasma clean the dross off inside with a roll cone, and clean the mill scale back about a half inch, all right? We wanna get it really clean. We don't want none of that mill scale or that dross messing us up. I'm gonna hit the inside with a roll cone and basically clean up all the inside. I clean about a quarter inch, a half inch back. I wanna make sure all that uh, dross is off. It's nice and clean, no mill scale. Once I get the inside of the pipe all cleaned out with a roll cone, I grab a hard rock. It could be whatever you guys want to use, flat wheel or whatever. Just using this Weiler hard rock right here, quarter inch. And I basically clean the outside of the oxidation off from the plasma. And then I come over here and clean about a half inch, quarter inch back, get that uh, mill scale and some other coating on it. And clean that back and that's it. Then we're gonna go ahead and put a land on it. You always wanna make sure your uh, pipe's good and straight. Uh, if it's not straight, you're gonna have a bad fit up. And when it's a bad fit up, your, your uh, keyhole is going to do different things to you, all right? You always want to try to keep consistent. By code, the book, the maximum allowance tolerance is you're allowed to have eighth inch on your land. I like to run 330 seconds. I don't like to have eighth inch because I have a problem getting my rod in there, get a good penetration. So I'm doing 330 seconds. I use a rod right here to gauge my 330 seconds on my root face. Let's go ahead and do this. Before I check it for my 330 seconds land, I mean, it's kind of close. I, you, there's usually a burr right in here. You want to get rid of that burr. It gives it like a little illusion where it's wider than it is. And I just take the file, a round edge file or half round, and I just clean it up. And you want to make sure your root face is consistent. I usually check it with a 330 seconds rod. And I put it right here. I make sure the rod's touching the inside of the bevel right here, basically inside the pipe. And I make sure the, my root face is no wider than this rod. And I basically check it in a couple spots. And that's about it. And you want to make sure it's consistent all the way around. If it's narrower, your keyhole is going to, it's going to blow up in your keyhole. It's just going to get big and you'll have to reduce the amps. Take your time. Fit up is very critical. I'm going to do the same thing on the other piece of pipe. That's it. We're going to tack her up. On the fit up, there's a couple ways you could do this. You either do it like this, set the 330 second spacer in here, and put the pipe on top. Then put a little weight on top to keep everything stationary while you're tacking. The second way is get a piece of angle right here, uh, put these two pipes on here, and put a 330 second spacer in here. All right, you can't have no more than 1 16th of misalignment. The misalignment's like this, 1 16th, all right? So I'm not gonna do it this way, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna put a tack here at 12 and 6. All right, we're gonna be running off this uh, ESOP EMT 235IC, so. It's already in stick mode. Come up here in my parameters. Make sure uh, we're at 6010 because we're running 6010, 330 seconds electrode. Then we're going to go over to our amps and I crank it down. I run a little hot. I like to run the high end of the 330 seconds electrode when I'm when I'm tacking. So we're going to run about 70 amps. You want to make sure your tack's no more than three eighths and at least a quarter inch wide. I usually do. The longer your tack is, more of this pipe's gonna close up, all right? I usually don't go more than a quarter inch. So we're gonna strike on the bevel, long arc, and let that, let that rod heat up. This tack's done. I usually turn the pipe all the way back around, 180 degrees. I pull my spacer out, and I wanna look at my gap. I basically wanna look at it, real, see if it's nice and even. And if it's tight, I'm gonna jam this rod in that tight spot. So I'm kinda of tight right here. I'm gonna force this rod in here and push it back a little bit, all right? You don't want a whole bunch in there because it's gonna be hard to take out. Since I'm a little kind of fat right here, and when I pound this down, I don't want this closed up. That's why that's rod in here. Now I'm gonna go around here and see how, see that's a little bit too big. That's tight over here, that's good. If the rod's barely going through or trying to start go through. So I'm still gonna put this over here. Tap on this a little bit. I'll put a tack right here and this will close it up a little bit. All right, we're going to check it with the straight edge, make sure we're not off anywhere. So we, there's no gaps right in here, so we're good. Checking a couple spots here, so we're good. So I'm going to put a tack right here, 180 degrees opposite from this one. We're going to strike about a quarter inch behind where we want our tack to start. We want to let that rod heat up. Long arc it a little bit, then, then push it in until you hear that hissing sound. 
So we're gonna go ahead and feather these out, get rid of all that black and wire wheel it and that's it. All right, we got the pipe tacked up in 2G position. We're all ready to go start welding. So I'm gonna turn my amps down about five. The uh, reason I had them up so high because I like tacking really hot. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this down. We're gonna turn it down 65 and then we're gonna go ahead and weld this out. All right, we're gonna start on this tack. We wanna start about a quarter inch or half inch back, about a quarter inch back from your uh, keyhole where you left. So, because we wanna let that warm up the tack real good. Then we're gonna push it in. All right, here we go. So we're gonna keep that rod pushed in there and just work it. All right, I actually pushed the rod in too hard. Uh, the reason is because I had my whip around my foot. I went to move my, wiggle my foot over. I kind of got stuck and then I tripped over. It, the way to fix it, it's gonna happen to somebody. Way to fix it is grind it back real thin so you can have a good tie in. Then we're just gonna st start back half inch back and come back in and that's about it. And we're gonna just keep running. All right, I'm gonna start back about a half inch. Let the tack warm up here. All right, here we go. We're gonna keep that keyhole, hear that hissing? That's what we want. Keep that rod in there. And just listen to that hissing. And watch that puddle. It's getting a little big, so I'm gonna whip it a little bit. All right. Let's come over here. When we come in this tack, we kind of want to push the rod in a little bit, and then run run about a quarter inch onto the other tack. All right. I don't grab another rod and just strike up and run the run the other half of pipe. It's hot. I usually let it cool a little bit and go ahead and wire wheel this and uh, grind out my little bumps right here. All right. So we're gonna just go ahead and clean clean this up. Definitely want to make sure you get your start right here because when you strike your arc right here and you come in, you're going to have a big hump right here when you go tie in. You can grind it afterwards, but it, you're waiting anyhow to let that pipe cool. You just may as well tackle it while you already got the grind in your hand and cleaning up a little bit, all right? So let's go ahead and finish this half of this pipe out. I'll have to whip it, see how it's getting a little big, it's normal. And we're just whipping it, letting it freeze a little bit. I push in a little bit on that tack where we tie in and I just move ahead about a quarter inch. And we pull out, that's it. We're gonna wire wheel it. I usually walk away for five minutes, let that pipe cool before I put my cap on. We're ready for our next, next pass. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and wire wheel it completely until it's silver. We got it all wire wheeled. So I usually take a thin wheel grinder and just hit my edges a little bit in my little high spots where I started. All right, you don't want to overgrind. If you overgrind, you're going to be putting extra passes in here, all right? This next step is very important. You got to judge if you can put your cap on or you got to put another fill pass in. This is how I judge. If it's within a 16th from top of my pipe, I know I'm good. So this is within a 16th, so I'm good. If you're not, get a 330 seconds rod and run a quick 330 second fill pass quickly around, all right? Then walk away, let it cool for five minutes, go take a drink, then come back and start your two bead cap. I do a two bead cap. Some people use this eighth inch and do a single pass. This is my way and I hope it helps. <clears throat> all right, we're jumping from 6010 to 7018. So on this machine, we gotta go up to P, we get this off of 6010 to all other electrodes. Then we're gonna go over here to our amps. I'm gonna crank it up to 90 amps, all right? And we're ready, go ahead and start our uh, first, first uh, cover pass. All right, here's a little quick tip. Instead of using a full length rod, because the farther away you shake, I usually go uh, halfway down. I, and I chip the flux right here, because I'm gonna be closer and I'm gonna be uh, more steady. That's about it. Oh, it's on grind mode. Oh, my eyeballs. Ah, uh, since we start, I, did, I couldn't see. You gotta grind that start out where you get porosity. 
All right, so I do a little dry run, make sure I'm comfortable, I'm not gonna get caught up. So you wanna make sure your puddle's coming over the bottom edge of that bevel, about a 16th. All right, I, re I remain about a five, five to 10 degree drag. And I just come over here and just keep running with it. We're gonna come off. I weld half the pipe. We're gonna chip the slag off. I grind my stop and I grind my start so I can have a good tie in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and weld this other half of this pipe. Then I'm gonna go ahead and show the last final cat pass. So the next step is you see this slag right here. So instead of picking it out with a, your chipping hammer or your pick, I take a uh, thin cutoff wheel, a uh, thin grinding wheel, and put it on grinder and just basically grind this toe right here all the way around, very lightly, just enough where the slag goes away. You don't want to overgrind, so I just basically go all the way around and that's it. Then we'll go ahead and lay our last pass in. Before we start start up, we want to think about where we started and stop at. So you always want to try to stagger your starts. Don't start put them right on top of each other. So I'm gonna go a little bit before it or after it. Come on. And we're just gonna make sure our puddles overlap in half of the bottom bead and about a sixteenth over on top of the bevel. I mean, on top of the pipe over there. And we're just gonna watch our puddle. That's it. And make sure we're trying to stay nice and straight and steady. And we're gonna look for our stop or in our restart from earlier in the middle of the pipe. We would kind of want to go past that point. All right. Chip this away, see how we do. We look pretty good, no undercut on the top. That's what we're uh, always worried about. So we're gonna go ahead and just grind right here and grind our start, because we're gonna start back up and finish this last pass. warm there. I'm going to chip the slag away. Look at everything. We look good. We don't have to put another pass on. That's good. I like doing a two bead cap. All right, we're going to wire brush this up and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hey, not too shabby, huh? Not bad for not doing it every day. All right, let's cut this down and we're going to show you the route. Woo -wee! That's a good looking route, man. That's two inch scale of 40 pipe. I hope you guys learned something. 60, 10, 70, 18 all the way out. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to us. Hit the bell button down below. Uh, learning is key. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy. See you next, see you next time on Man Cub. Woo wee! That's a good looking right. <laughs> Woo wee! That's a good looking right. Right. <laughs> I can't say root right now. Yeah, that was a right. All right.